Anyone who lives alone and manifests no longing to be in a relationship is in our times almost automatically, more or less secretly, viewed as both pitiable and deeply troubled. It's simply not thought possible to be at once alone and normal. This sets us up for collective catastrophe because it means that a huge number of people who have no innate wish to live with anyone else and are at heart deeply ill-suited to doing so are every year press-ganged and shamed into conjugal life with disastrous results for all involved. Only once singlehood has completely equal prestige with its alternative can we ensure that people will be free in their choices and hence join couples for the right reasons because they love another person, rather than because they're terrified of remaining single. Here, then, are a few of the many good reasons to spend your life alone. Because romantic love is a dangerous illusion. We should recognise that romantic love, the idea of being deeply enamoured of one special partner over a whole lifetime, is a very new, ambitious and really pretty odd concept, at best 250 years old, from close-up, over long periods of time, almost everyone is condemned to be pretty dispiriting and difficult. A good romantic marriage is evidently theoretically possible, but it's also extremely unlikely in practice, which should make any failure feel a good deal less shameful. No one thinks their partner is terrific after a while. Those among us who choose to stay single shouldn't be thought unromantic, Indeed, we may be among the very most romantic of all, because it is in the end the fervent romantics who should be especially careful of ending up in mediocre relationships. Relationships best suit the kind of people who don't actually expect too much from them. We aren't sane enough to be in relationships. Though it's a sign of some maturity to know how to love and live alongside someone, it is actually a sign of even greater maturity to recognise that this is something one isn't in the end going to be psychologically capable of, as a good portion of us simply are not. Retiring oneself voluntarily in order to save others and oneself from the consequences of one's own inner emotional turmoil is the true sign of a great and kind soul. Being alone means not inflicting yourself on others. It spares you from constant reminders of how difficult and strange you are. No one is there to hold a mirror up, record your antics, and constantly make you accountable for them. If you're lucky, you'll be able to tolerate and even like yourself if you're on your own. Relationships spoil love. It may be better to feel alone and be denied sex outside of a relationship than inside one. One thing the single are never denied is hope. All this isn't to say that being alone is without problems. There are, of course, drawbacks to both states, being single and being in a couple. Loneliness in the one, suffocation, anger and frustration in the other. The truth is, we're simply not terribly good at being happy whatever our relationship status, which is ultimately an argument for neither rushing too fast into a couple nor rushing too fast out of one. That was an excerpt from the School of Life Reason to Remain Single on YouTube. We will have our own conversation on single with my co-host, Jolin, with our beautiful three guests, Colin, Nisha, and Sydney, at Anything Can Happen Friday. Stay tuned. Anything Can Happen Friday, the art and cultural site of Southeast Asia. Welcome back to Driana ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. If you are at Anything Can Happen Friday, I'm Grace. And I'm Jolie. So we're going to talk about quite, is it sensitive or it is something fun to talk about, but it's something that everyone is going to write. Yes, it's a phase. <laughs> right, so we're going to talk about relationship and our first series of Adrian ASEAN will talk about single, being single. And here we are in our house. There are three people uh, starting from Colin, Nisha and Sydney here. So let's say good morning to them. Good morning. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good morning. All right. So who shall we start with? Perhaps ladies first, Nisha. <laughs> Could you briefly introduce yourself to our listeners? I'm uh, Nisha. I am the current Miss Pan Continental Malaysia. And I'm a full-time model. Full-time model? Yep. For a long time. 
Yes, I've been modeling for about seven years now. Right, you are single. Yes, I am very single. Very single and available for how long? <laughs> I've been single for about three years now. And why? Um, I had a bad experience for a first relationship. And so then, you don't feel really necessary to have been in a relationship. No, after that I just didn't find the right one. Maybe I, you know, I set my standards a bit more higher, and I just never found the one. Okay, we'll move on. For from now on, we'll come back to that story <laughs> later. Okay, how about you, Colin? Hello. I am a professional MC. I've been doing this for eight years. And you're single too. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> mm, it's it's not important. Yeah. It's quite deep. You gotta elaborate even more. If you if you don't if you learn how to prioritize your life and prioritize things, yeah, this is this comes along after that. Okay, so, so prioritizing. When's the last time that you have dated? Uh, eight years ago. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it was so short that I don't remember. Yeah, it's probably like two years ago. Mm. Yeah, two years ago. It All was right. a short date. Okay, so you don't mind really talking about your dating experience later on, right? Yeah, no problem. Okay, <laughs> okay. So let's uh, get back to um, Sydney. Hi, I'm Sydney, and I uh, I make videos for YouTube, and I work under the YouTube channel Groom Film. Yes, like everybody just mentioned about it. Uh, could you also tell us reason why you're a single? A lot of things, actually. Uh, I'm not sure. If one thing <laughs> is that okay. One thing is being too picky, and then being think then thinking too much, and then all those, and then a lot of things, and then also being having like low self esteem. Wow. That doesn't really a mix of that mix of everything. Okay, it's quite complicated within yourself, though. <laughs> yeah, it's quite contradictory to everything, and it's a. Like, at one moment, it's like okay, I'm not. I like I'm. I want this person, but mm-hmm. at the same time, I don't have the confidence, confidence in myself to like. Okay, can I maintain this? Am I mature enough to handle this? At the same time, in in other times, I'm like, oh, I'm looking for someone, mm-hmm. and then there is very few people that actually fit within what I actually. One. And I then think, think oh, I don't know what I want. And, uh, yeah. I think that's totally fair. I mean, if you're not ready f- f- to jump right in, and yeah. you, if you know yourself so well that if there's insecurities, there's self-esteem issues, yeah, why would you want to jump in straight to a relationship? Through that, because of that, it's not yeah. fair for the relationship. It's not know. fair. Yes, that's true. Yeah. It's not fair. But at the same time, don't you want it? That's why you want to give it a try. try? Yes, the heart actually wants it, but yeah. at the same time, the brain tells me, okay, maybe no. And then at the same time, it's like, it's, I also don't know where to start and how to do it. It's like when we are looking at stories and how other people do things, it's how other people do things. But, the, but when it comes to yourself... Mm-hmm. Dude, it's all assuming it's from society. Mm-hmm. It's simple yeah. as that. I can agree with that. Well, I think Sydney Sydney is a bit stressed at this moment, so let him just calm down for a while. <laughs> let the let the lady uh, talk about it more. Yeah. So, how about you, Nisha? Uh, for me, it was more about finding. Like I said, uh, three years ago, I had a very bad experience for my first relationship, and then I just started. I didn't want to settle anymore. Mm-hmm. What I when I look back into that relationship, and, and it was a long, it was a long relationship. It was five years long. Oh wow! wow. So I I started studying like what did I do. For that to go wrong And I realised that For a lot of times I settled And that was not something I want to do anymore mm-hmm. Are there any elements Or any uh, facts That you, you're looking for At the moment When it comes to relationship? Uh, yes uh, The one thing I learned Was communication Is very important Communication uh, Yeah and, But then, then, then again I feel like Over these three years The dating scene Has morphed into Something so different Yeah that's very true Yeah, You know <laughs> That you can't really You know <laughs> Yeah, can, I mean, agree. Yeah, <laughs> I you call okay. I'm very old school in my dating approach. I wow. I don't use Tinder because I don't see how you can swipe and find your potential partner. Right. Mm-hmm. How how is that possible? But then that's just in today's society. In exactly today. my point. I said that's how it has morphed into something. And and why are we you know why are we falling into that? What what happened to sitting down, asking out, talking, mm-hmm. getting to know the person in person rather than just texting on WhatsApp? Uh, that's another platform um, that is open for communication, I guess. But of course, that sort of uh, loses the personal touch. Exact texts to me yeah. are very impersonal because what can you what except <laughs> reading? How can you decipher what the person is actually feeling? I think that's where the emoticon comes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, those guys! Oh, now it's all emoticon. That's a cute little. Yeah. I tried to make a call someone to someone the other day, and then I got scolded. Say, why do you call? scolded? Oh, yeah, why can't you just WhatsApp me? What, <laughs> what happened to conversation? Ex- I think we can bring it back. Yeah. I feel education is really strong about it. Mm-hmm. Communication, of course, definitely. I agree with you. 
but communication to, in regards today has become so no touch. Yeah. Nothing. Mm. Communication We're communicating what? What's up? Ma? Dude, you're sitting in front of me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've seen a lot of couples, think, right? They're sitting together, but then they're, they're just, uh, they glue themselves to the phone. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. I think they also have become habit or have become a, one of our lifestyle that we have to do. I think in some ways also, it's it like, like the whole texting thing, it sort of helps a lot of people who are natural introverts to f- take the first step in communicating. No, well, that's I think true. it's just making people lazy, dude. Exactly, I definitely agree <laughs> with Colin. I think it is the people, I mean, they have become lazy. They don't take an effort anymore. I mean, it's a risk you have to take. Yeah. We yeah. have it's, here it's, two it's different exactly. opinions here. But I can also agree with Sydney here because uh, introverts, right? Yeah. Uh, they don't have a sort of a confidence to initiate the com- communication. But that also shows that you are a different person when you're texting and when you're actually in front of the if person. If you're saying that you're an introvert but you have a Facebook account, do you still consider yourself as an introvert in the end of the day? I don't see what's maybe, the point. Maybe actually. people who are, in, who are introvert, they use Facebook just to express keep themselves. in touch with your friends and family mm-hmm. and also the way to I don't know like what Sydney just yeah. say express yourself yeah I mean like growing up also I never really I was very a very awkward person even in school and everything <laughs> and basically during during the days of MSN and live messenger SMS everything those were my outlets to express what I have inside in my mind to speak out and it was my way of being an extrovert in the virtual world, but I cannot be in the real world. That's that's sort of like that. <laughs> Today's Deep guy. But, but I, I really know. Should I like yeah. or should I not like? Should I like? I'm not. Oh, exactly. Like, right? like, <laughs> yeah. I do have envy for people who are naturally extroverted, and then they can go out to go out to people and say hi, and then just make friends just like that. Those are the things that I really appreciate. That if I could do it, I would rather just use that. But you feel that it's not you. It's not exactly me. Yeah, not really me. I see. <laughs> but at the same time, yeah, maybe because I'm just, you know, too free, too lazy, too pussy to do anything, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So <laughs> let's calm down for a while. So we've been talking about communication, yeah. how it is important when it comes to this modern society right now. So, yeah, right, let's so, take a very short break yeah, here and then we'll come back uh, to continue our conversation here. Awesome. You're now listening to Durian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. 